uh, for you. Uh, we do apologize for for uh, uh, what's happening here. Amen. But uh, we are here. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. I pray that y'all are able to see us. Amen. I pray that y'all are able to view us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So we thank God today. Amen for you and you being with us today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Well, we praise God for you. Amen. We thank God for you. Going back to our announcements, as we said, on next Sunday, uh, join us on next Sunday at 6.30 p.m. And bless God, we're going to be working on this audiovisual thing throughout the week and get this thing right. But join us next Sunday at 6.30 p.m. Amen. And uh, we're going to be having a, join us in communion on next Sunday. As I said, get your communion uh, uh, elements together. That run down to your supermarket. Uh, praise God. Go down to your... Uh, uh, bless God, go down to your uh, supermarket and get your, your your grape juice and your unleavened bread, better known as matzah. And together on next Sunday, we're going to have and take communion. And we're going to be teaching about the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So join us on next Sunday. Praise his name. Listen, uh, let me give you those scriptures once again. Uh, for uh, St. Matthew chapter 26, verse 13 through 26. St. Mark 14, chapter 14, verses 22 to 26. St. Luke chapter 22, verses 14 through 20. And 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 34. Uh, those we're going to be talking about on next Sunday, teaching and preaching on communion. Amen. Amen. So join us on next Sunday, if you will. Praise God. And uh, we're going to have a glorious time in the Lord uh, here at a time of worship. Amen. And we're going to be praising God. Amen. For what the Lord is doing and what the, how the Lord is moving. Amen. Praise God. How the Lord is moving here uh, uh, on Ustream. Praise God. We, we thank God today to for you, you and you. Amen. We know that some are having a hard time getting on, but uh, we know that they're going to get on yet. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. We thank God for you. Amen. And we praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. We praise God for you. Amen. We, and we thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for you joining us. Amen. We thank God for you being with us. On Thursday night, if you will, on Thursday night, praise God. On Thursday night, hallelujah. Praise God. On Thursday night, uh, join us at the, on the upper, room, upper Room Prayer Hour every Thursday night. 
praise God every Thursday night. Join us for the Upper Room Prayer Hour. Hallelujah. On every Thursday night um, at uh, 9 p.m. 9 p.m. Join us every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Join us at the Upper Room Prayer Hour. You can dial in that number. Praise God. Praise God. You can dial in that number. Join us at the upper room. Uh, this one is fantastic. You can dial in that number. Praise God at seven one two four three two eight three nine nine. Seven one two four three two eight three nine nine. Use access code seven nine seven seven nine six. That's seven nine seven seven nine six. That uh, join us every Thursday night. Amen. Every Thursday night. Join us here. Join us on the at the Upper Room Prayer Hour. Amen. I am your be I'll be your host once again for the Upper Room Prayer Hour. Amen. We're praying for our moderator. Amen. We're in the process of moving from one location to another. But join us on Thursday night. And for those who are, who, amen, amen. You can also, you can also if you write me, write me. Let me know you're viewing the broadcast. Write me here at P.O. Box 3121. That's P.O. Box 3121, Patterson, New Jersey. That's P.O. Box 3121, Patterson, New Jersey. Uh, you can email me at worship, the number 2, him. 52 at gmail.com that's worship to him 52 at gmail.com write me there or write me at the p.o box uh 3121 patterson new jersey 07509 let me know you're viewing the broadcast let me know you're hearing the broadcast amen and i declare i declare i will answer uh every letter that is sent amen so uh, write us, amen. Uh, we soon be coming to you teaching on ministerial protocol, amen. We're in the process of preparing those lessons, amen. And we're going to be teaching on the proper attire, the uh, proper way for a minister to enter the church, uh, the proper way to address the bishop. Uh, we're going to we're going to, we're going to be talking about a lot of things under the title and the umbrella of ministerial protocol amen so join us if you will praise god join us um uh real soon you're going to be talking about that as well praise god amen amen we're going to be talking about that as well praise the name of god praise god hallelujah hallelujah amen hallelujah praise god so join us on uh that evening if you will praise the name of god now uh bless his name now uh praise god now we thank god for you who are viewing who have just tuned into view amen we thank god for you i just want to back up i haven't gone to the word yet we're going to get to the word in just a second but on june the 7th which is next sunday amen Tune in uh, to a time of worship with your host, Bishop Darrell Towns. Amen. The state bishop of the Victoria International Fellowship of Churches, where our chief apostle is our Bishop Larry E. Boston. But join us on next Sunday here on a time of worship. Now, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be taking communion together. And I'm encouraging you to go to your supermarket and get your grape juice, get your unleavened bread, better known as matzah. Amen. And join us on next Sunday. But be prepared to join us on next Sunday as we take communion together. Amen. Uh, we're going to be talking about communion on next Sunday. Um, St. Matthew chapter 26, verse uh, 26 to 13. Get your pen and paper. These are scriptures we're going to be coming from on next Sunday. St. Mark uh, chapter 14, verse 20, verses 22 through 26. St. Luke chapter 22 verses 14 through 20 and first corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 through 34. again that saint matthew chapter 26 verse 13 through 26 uh saint mark chapter 14 verse 20 through 2 through 26 
and St. Luke chapter 22 verses 14 through 20 and 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 through 34. We're going to be talking about that uh, from those scriptures that I said we're going to be talking about communion. As I said, join us on Thursday nights, every Thursday night from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. on our upper room prayer hour. That number is 712-432-8399 and use access code 797796. You can also, uh, I encourage you to write me, uh, Bishop Darrell Towns at P.O. Box 3121 uh, or either Time of Worship at 3121 Patterson, New Jersey, uh, 07509. That's P.O. Box 3121, <clears throat> excuse me, Patterson, New Jersey, 07509. And you can email me as well, praise God, at worshiptohim52 at gmail.com. That's worshiptohim52 at gmail.com. Praise God. We thank God for you here today, and we praise God for you today, and we thank God for you. Amen for joining us today. Let's go to prayer for a moment as, as we get ready to go to the Word of God. Uh, get your Bibles if you don't have it already. Get your Bible. We're going to be coming from Isaiah chapter 10, verse 26. One verse of Scripture. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. Amen. And we're going to read from the Jubilee Bible as well as from the King New King James Version. Praise the name of God. While you're doing that, let's go to prayer. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today, God, for this broadcast. We thank you, O oh God, for those who are viewing. We thank you, Lord God, for those who are tuned in. We give you praise. We ask that you would bless them in a special way today. In the name of Jesus, God, we ask that whatever their needs are, their needs will be met today. And they be encouraged, uplifted. We ask you to bless the word of God. Let me decrease and you increase. And God, we give you the praise and we give you the glory. And we give you the honor. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. We do give honor to our First Lady of the new state of New Jersey, our uh, sister Barbara Towns. Amen. We thank God for her, our First Lady Barbara Towns, sitting on my, uh, on my right. And we thank God for her. Amen today. Luke, I'm, I'm sorry, Isaiah chapter 27. I'm so geared up for next Sunday. Isaiah chapter 27. I'm sorry, I tell you, I'm, I'm excited about next Sunday. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. Seven, Praise God. It reads like this. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. Praise God. I want to read that from J Jubilee Bible 2000. It reads, And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be consumed in the presence of the anointing. Amen. Um, as I get ready to go to the Word of God, one last announcement. I want you to follow me. There should be a tab here on Ustream that says follow. I want you to follow me. Amen. So you'll know when I'm coming on. You also can download your mobile app. There is a mobile app. You can download that by going to Google Store and download the mobile app, Ustream uh, mobile app there at, at, uh, at, um, at the Google Store. Amen. Praise God. There is an app. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be consumed in the presence of the anointing. Amen. I want to talk from the subject unchained. Unchained. Praise God. In our text this evening, we find the nation of Judah in one of their most difficult times. The Assyrians have burdened them down 
with despair, burden them down with defeat, and burden them down with des desperation. But here the prophet heralds, here the prophet yells out, here the prophet proclaims of a brighter future where there is a promise of great deliverance, a promise of a great breakthrough, a promise of a great answer to prayer. And how shall this be done? Because of the anointing. Now remember on last week, if you tuned in on last week, last Sunday was Pentecost Sunday, and we talked about the Holy Ghost. This week we're talking about the anointing. Notice this. The yoke, the problem, will be destroyed because of the anointing. Now it would seem to me that if I wanted to go from the problem to the solution, then I would need to find out, look into, and apply the power of the anointing in my life. If I want to go from being bound to delivered, I need to find out, I need to look into and apply the anointing in my life. Now understand the phrase here. It did not say the anointing would break the yoke. For if anything that is broken must often can be put back together. But it says the anointing would destroy the yoke. That means that it would annihilate. It would totally get rid of it. It would be gone completely totally, eternally. That's the power of the anointing. I'm starting to feel this anointing. And if we want to go from the problem to the solution, then we need the anointing. Now let's consider what is a yoke. Can I, can I just sort of take my time and break this down for you? A yoke is a device for joining together a pair of draft animals, especially oxen, oxen, usually consisting of a cross piece with two bold shaped pieces, each enclosing the head of an animal. An emblem or a symbol of subjection, servitude, slavery, as an archway under which prisoners of war were compelled to compass by the ancient Romans and others. An agency of oppression, subjection, servitude. And the Bible says that the anointing would destroy the yoke. Now, there are many yokes that bind us for various reasons. There are physical yokes, sickness, disease, infirmities, health issues, diabetes, asthma, uh, all kinds of uh, health issues, praise God. There are issues, there are physical yokes, praise God that bind us. Praise the name of God. There are mental yokes. Praise the name of God. Depression and fear and anxiety. Oppression. There are financial yokes. Debt. Debt. Poverty. Theft. There are family yokes. Children on drugs and rebellious teenagers and marriage problems. There are habit yokes, drugs and tobacco and alcohol. But I stop by here to tell you by way of internet today, if you want to go from the problem to the solution, then you need to understand that the anointing 
destroys every yoke. And knowing this, someone said the anointing makes the difference. Hey, bless his name. And I know what they're talking about when they say the anointing makes the difference. But the truth of the matter is that the anointing doesn't make the difference. It is the difference. Somebody shout amen. If you want victory, if you want healing, if you want peace, if you want a breakthrough, the uh, your yoke if you want the yoke destroyed, then the anointing is the difference. Now, what you might ask is that is the anointing. Exactly what is that anointing? Let me answer that question this, this evening by talking to you about three things concerning the secret power of of the anointing in your life. First of all, I want you to consider firstly the origination of the anointing. What is the anointing? The anointing is referring especially to that oil that was used in the Old Testament that symbolized God's favor, God's approval, God's presence, and God's power over a certain individual for a particular office or assignment from God. Example, the high priest was anointed with oil. The furnishings in the tabernacle were anointed with oil. Kings were anointed with oil. Prophets were anointed with oil. What would happen was that when a servant of God was anointed for service, they would take oil and pour it upon their heads. And that sacred anointing oil symbolized the presence and power of God. Hallelujah. I'm starting to feel this thing. And today when we talk about the anointing, we're not talking about just the oil. We're in effect talking about God's blessings. We're talking about God's presence. We're talking about God's favor. And the way that God imparts the anointing, praise God, in this day and age is not through liquid, but through the person of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said in Luke 14, 18 through 19, and I'm coming from the King James Version, if you will, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the deliverance to the captives, and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty to them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. In other words, the anointing today comes to the person of the Holy Ghost. That's why you need the Holy Ghost after you're saved. We touched and we talked about that on last Sunday. That's why you need to be sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Because the more you are acquainted with the Holy Ghost, the more access you have to the anointing in your life. That's why the prophet Zechariah said in Zechariah 4 and 6, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. It's through the anointing that imparted by the Holy Spirit that the yoke is destroyed in our lives. We're talking about unchained. Oh, so if you want to go from the problem to the solution, you need to acquaint yourself. You need to get acquainted with the Holy Ghost. You need to get to know the Holy Ghost. You need to have the Holy Ghost on the inside. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. He is the originator of the anointing. And the anointing destroys the yoke. When I think about when I think about slavery and the slaves, all I can imagine is pictures of 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 our colored people, our black people back then. Uh, no racial intent, pun intended. Most of them, 
naked and bound with chains around their legs and necks with their hands either tied or chained together. They are humiliated, scarred, beaten, abused, and mistreated, and many are killed. They don't understand exactly what is going on, and they have no clue to, as to what is happening to their family. All they know is that their freedom has been taken away, and now they find themselves chained and bound. Understand, slavery is an institution. Praise God. Uh, based upon dominance and submission, whereby one person owns another and can, and can demand from that person labor or whatever other services they desire simply because they have obtained authority and power to do so. Not the right, but the power. Watch this. Slavery has been called by many names. Among them are bondage, servitude, captivity, oppression, burden, seldom weight, conqu conquest, and suppression. We all have been slaves to something in various degrees, and in some ways we still are. Hello, somebody. We are slaves to governments, to laws, taxes, and to employers. Now understand, I'm not saying we are in slavery, but we are all subjected to these entities and in some form or fashion and must abide by the rules established therefore. However, we must not still be slaves to sin. And I'll, I'll preach that in a minute. Freedom, liberty, independence is to be free. Non-interference, immunity, exemption, emancipation, to be released, uncaught, unconstrained, unbuttoned, unconfined, unconstrained, unchecked, unprevented, unhindered, unobstructed, unbound, uncontrolled, unshackled, unfettered, unbridled, unmuzzled, unrestricted, unlimited, unforced, uncompelled, and unchained. Oh, press his name. History, history, did let us give, give a quick let me give a quick history lesson, if you will. Slavery reaches back to before recorded history, and certainly back to Nimrod's time in the building of the Tower of Babel in Genesis chapter 10. This is interesting, if you will. During the course of history, slaves were acquired in several different ways. The first was by capture. Prisoners of war were commonly reduced to slavery when captured. The second way is by purchase. Slaves were sold among all kinds of other merchandise and from country to country. The third way is by birth. Children were born into the house of slave parents because houseborn and became houseborn slaves. Praise the name. The fourth way is restitution. If a thief could not make mention to pay his fines and damages, Funds towards this could be raised by selling him as a slave. And this was a very common way of ending up in slavery. The fifth way is similar by default on debts. Debtors who went bankrupt were often forced, praise God, to sell their children as slaves, or the children would be confiscated as slaves by the creditor. The sixth way that people ended up in slavery is by self-sale. That is selling oneself voluntarily into slavery. That is the way people today end up as spiritual slaves. The seventh way is abduction to steal a person and then to reduce the, them that kidnap person to slavery. We hear stories of people who have been abducted and held as sex slaves and sold into sex slavery and called it human trafficking, trafficking today. According to Joseph, in 97,000 97, Jews were enslaved as a result of the crushing of the Jews, rebellion by Vespasian and Titus between 66 AD and 70 AD. If you will recall, that is around the time of the destruction of the temple. And in an earlier revolt, 100,000 Jews was enslaved. Through the years, 
The Roman Catholic Church did not oppose institution gradual disappearance of agricultural slaves. And these agricultural slaves, praise God, moved from slavery into what actually later became sir, served them. Although they were given their freedom, they were still slaves to the land and still owed debt on the land. Therefore, whoever owned that land kept them for all practical purposes as slaves. Mm. Oh, praise God. The semi-freedom, semi and I'm going to tie this all in in a minute. Semi-freedom of servitude were the dominant forms of slavery in the Middle Ages. And although domestic slavery did not disappear, the Catholic Church began to encourage emancipation of slaves while in ignoring the fact, praise God, ignoring the fact that many slaves were attached to the church, officials and church property, Islam, like Christianity, like Catholicism, I'm sorry, accepted slavery, and it became a standard institution in Muslim lands. One form of Muslim slavery was in the eunuch guardians of the harems. Eunuchs have been widely known in Grecian and Roman, and especially uh, by Byzantine times, but it was among the Muslims and in the East Asians that they would survive the longest. Watch this. The Muslims would capture Christians, take the young boys, castrate them, and train them to be superior fighters. <clears throat> then use them to fight and capture Christians to continue the cycle. Although it were extremely profitable, the African slave trade sending approximately 11 to 15 of million African slaves to America. A revolution in the institution of slavery came in 15 and 16th centuries. I'm going to tie this in after a while. But I just want to give you a little background in history, if you will. The exploration of the African coast by Portuguese navigators resulted in and plundering of slave raiders among the coast of Africa were lucrative and important business conducted with horrendous brutality. African slaves were first produced to the British settlements in the Atlantic coast and the arrival of the first shipload of chain slaves in Virginia in 1619 and raising of the staple crops such as coffee, tobacco, sugar, rice, and later cotton. And the plantation economy made the importance of slaves and the importance of slaves from Africa particularly vulnerable in southern colonies of the United States. Although efforts to end slavery, end voluntary servitude, continued through the last half of the 1900s from the severe slavery. There are things that chain us. There are things that change. Watch with this brief history. As you can see, physical slavery has always been in effect. However, there are other things then chains, shackles, and bars that many people are imprisoned right now. There are things that chain us spiritually and mentally and prevent us, praise God, from doing the will of God, praise God. And in our lives, sure, you may be free from physical bar and chains. You may be free to walk the streets. You may be free to go food shopping. You may be free to read a book or free to walk in your kitchen, walk in your door, in and out as you will. But you are still held captive because you are still connected to emotional emasculation. Some are spiritual, some spiritually. Sick, mentally messed up, physically plundered. You are being held in bondage by chains of depression drugs, alcohol, sexual perversion, lust and hatred. So many people are chained up with these things. You are constantly being whipped and beaten by demonic slave masters, demonic slave masters uh, that are trying to destroy the value of value. They are determined to have your chain, your name. They are determined to have change your name, trying to strip you of your identity, hold you bondage, praise God, spiritually. They are constantly abusing you, making you feel that you are nothing. They won't let you out of the field of sin. They are bound you, unable to speak free. And unless you come from the bondage, what, is, what has you bound spiritually, it'll cause you to spend eternity in hell. So on today, I'm not preaching 
to you, but I'm preaching to that demon that has been assigned as your slave master. And I come to make an emancipation proclamation. The Bible says in John 8, 36, St. John 8, 36, if the son therefore, oh, bless God, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I come to let you know today, this evening, you can be unchained. I want to spend time talking about the things that chain us, how we can break free from those things by the unchained power of the living God. In Isaiah 10 and 27, our base scripture for today, it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken away and that off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Anointing can destroy the yoke. Hallelujah. The anointing can destroy the yoke. The devil may have you bound today, but I come to tell you, may have you bound with depression. The chained chained with lust today, chained with unnatural affection today, chained by drugs. Uh, seem like you just can't get away from that marijuana. Seem chained with chained with that demon of heroin today. Chained with alcohol today. Chained in your mind today. Seem like and the devil is just speaking to your mind today. Unclean thoughts are battling you in the mind. Praise the name of God. Chain in your finances. Got you bound up in debt. Overhead in debt. Seem like you can't get out of debt. Oh, bless his name. Chain in laziness. Seem like all you want to do is sleep. Hey, praise the name of God. Don't want to wash your face. Don't want to get dressed. Chain in laziness. Don't want to pick up a yourself. I know you got some kids like this chained in chained with discouragement. Seem like you're always discouraged. Oh, and always down, always depressed. But I want to but I want you to know this evening that there is an anointing that will destroy the chains in your life. Oh, stop sitting there bound. Stop sitting there beat up. Stop sitting there abused. Stop sitting there mistreated. Stop sitting there hopeless. Stop sitting there lost, undecided and confused, sick and oppressed. Stop sitting there lonely, emasculated. Say the anointing, fall on me. You know the song, there's a song that I love to sing. Anointing, fall on me. Anointing, let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. For it is the anointing that will destroy the yoke. It will is the anointing that will break the chains in your life. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Shackles on my feet won't allow me to dance. Take the shackles off your feet. Let the anointing take the shackles off your feet. Hallelujah. Anointing fall on me. I feel like I'm going to lose my mind. Anointing fall on me. I can't praise you. I'm bound in these chains. Anointing fall on me. Praise the name of Jesus. I can't praise you like I want to. Hallelujah. I'm bound up in these chains. Anointing fall on me. Oh Lord, I need you to set me free. For whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I want to be unchained. So anointing fall on me. The anointing does not come in front of the masses, but is placed upon you in the secret closet. The anointing is the ultimate answer to the countless prayers. The anointing is the exaltation of the Holy Ghost upon those that were abased. The anointing destroys the yoke. It breaks the chains. It impregnates. It rejuvenates. It separates. It consecrates. Can I get somebody to shout amen? The anointing soothes. The anointing caresses and it eases the pain. Oh, the anointing supports. It illuminates. It enriches. And it, it empowers. The anointing will make you weep like a child. It'll make you cry like a baby. And yet it'll cause you to live like a giant. Oh, praise God. The anointing. Oh, bless his name. The anointing is not practice. It's not a practice talent. Nor is it a gift of intelligence. It's not a predicated on social status. 
or economical stability or genealogical predicate, predig predigy. No elegance can woo it. No market can sell it. No manufacturer can produce it. And no preacher can bestow it. The anointing is a gift of God. It is the knighthood given to those that are willing to stand on the battlefield and hold up the bloodstained banner for the Lord. Eloquence is impressive. Prestige is persuasive. persuasive and thought ignites inspiration. But it's only the anointing that is able to break the yoke of sin, to win the burden heart and heart to God, and to set the liberty those that are bruised. So anointing, I need you to fall on me. It's the anointing that will destroy your yoke today. It's the anointing that will break things in your life. No matter what you're going through today, let the anointing break the yoke. No matter what you have in your life, let the anointing destroy the yoke. For it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Praise the name of God. It's the anointing that will destroy the yoke. Sweet anointing, fall on me. Sweet anointing, fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on the anointing, fall on me. Will you allow the anointing to fall on you today? Will you allow the anointing to fall on you today? I asked a question on last Sunday. Have you received the Holy Ghost? since you believed. If you have not received the Holy Ghost, you need that Holy Ghost, but it is the anointing. And that anointing will destroy the yoke in your life. It's the anointing of God. When you're going through your problems and you're going through your situation, just cry out, anointing, fall on me and be unchained. Be set free. Be loosed from whatever you're going through. The Bible says, there was a woman with the issue of blood who was sick for quite a number of years. I believe it was 40 long years. And the Bible says she pushed her way through the crowds. And the scripture says that she touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And the virtue, the anointing, came out of him. And he said, who touched me? She said, I did. He said, be made whole. It was the anointing. It was the anointing. It was the anointing. So will you today, will you allow the anointing to unchain you? Will you allow the anointing to unchain you? Praise the name of God. It is the anointing, I feel it in my belly. It is the anointing that will unchain you. Unchain, unchain. It is the anointing that will destroy the yoke. We have lifted the burden from up off of your shoulder. And it is the anointing that will destroy the yoke. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. The anointing will destroy every yoke and break every chain. If you don't have that anointing, I'm going to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. I release the anointing right now on the people of God. I release the anointing in the name of Jesus that will destroy every yoke in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now maybe you're going and you are going through some things in your life and you need prayer. I want you to lay your hands on the screen right now. Lay your hands on my hand. This is just a point of contact. And let the let the anointing of God in the name of Jesus. Those that have hands laid upon their screens right now that are touching my hands right now in Jesus' name. God, I'm asking in the name of Jesus that yokes would be destroyed because of the anointing. God, in the name of Jesus, I bind the sickness, I bind up the pain in the body. I come against it right now. I come against that, that sick, queasy feeling 
In the name of Jesus, I bind up that headache right now. In the name of Jesus. And I thank you for it. And I give you the praise for healing and deliverance. In Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. Believe now that you have received what you've asked for. And I declare unto you this day. Praise God. And I call it done. I decree and declare it done. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Maybe you've heard this message and you're chained up and bound up because you don't know Jesus Christ. I dare not leave these airways until I give you the opportunity to accept our Lord and Savior as your personal Savior. Maybe you have not accepted Christ as your personal Savior. This is the time now you can accept him as your personal Savior. Praise the name of God. All you have to do right now, praise God. Bow your head with me, if you will. Amen. And I'm going to pray a prayer. And pray with me as I pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I accept your son Jesus as my personal Savior. I confess my sins. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me. And now I accept Jesus as my personal Savior and I make him Lord of my life. And I thank you, Lord, for making me a new creature. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in your heart that Christ has been raised from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. If you have confessed Christ, this is what I need you to do for me. I need you to write me and let me know that you have prayed this prayer. I want to get some pertinent information into your hands, some very important information to help you grow, to help you grow in your Christian walk. Write me at P.O. Box 3121, Patterson, New Jersey, 07509. Let me know that you have accepted Christ as your personal Savior. Or email me at worship the number 2 him 52 at gmail.com. That's worship, the number two hymn, 52 at gmail.com. And let me know that you have accepted Christ as your personal Savior. I want to get some information into your hands that will help you grow and will help your walk grow. Help you grow and help you walk in the Lord. Amen. I want you to know that Bishop loves you. Amen. Bishop loves you. Amen. Do you who are viewing, uh, that are viewing this broadcast, God bless you. Thank you so much for viewing. Tell somebody that Time of Worship is on the air with our host, Bishop Darrell Towns, every Sunday evening at 6.30. We had some technical problems, but we're going to work those out. Amen. We're going to get them straight now. But tell somebody we're on the air. Amen. A Time of Worship, preaching and teaching the gospel. Remember, join me on next Sunday. Join me on next Sunday. Praise God. Amen. Join me on next Sunday uh, for a Time of Worship. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to be taking communion together. Amen. So get to your supermarket. Amen. And get your grape juice, get your unleavened bread, your matzah, and join me here for a time of worship as we commune together. Amen. If you have not gotten the scriptures for next Sunday, you can. they are St. Matthew's chapter 26, verse 26 to 13. St. Mark chapter 14, verses 22 to 26. St. Luke chapter 22. Verse 14 through 20, and Saint and First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to through 34, and again that's Saint Matthew. I'm sorry, chapter 26, verses 13 through 26. Amen. Those are the scriptures we're going to be dealing with on next Sunday. So join us here for a time of worship on next Sunday. God love you. I love you. Praise God. God love you is our prayer. Amen. And we thank God for you joining us today. I, it is a blessing. It is a blessing that you have joined us today. Amen. And you have become a part of this, of this internet ministry. Amen. That God has given us. Amen. And we thank God for you today. And we praise God for you today joining us. Amen. For a time of worship. Amen. And a time of praise. In a time of glorification, glorifying God, amen, for we know that God, amen, is, uh, praise God, God is with us, 
God is for us. Praise God. And we thank God for you today. Amen. Joining us today. Praise God. So uh, join us here every Sunday. Praise the name of God. And we thank God for you. Remember, this is the time of worship for your host, Bishop Darrell Towns. Praise God. Amen. Bishop Darrell Towns. Praise God. And we thank God for you and First Lady Barbara Towns. Amen. And remember, stay unchained. Amen. Stay unchained. God bless you is our prayer. Now may the Lord grace of our Lord and Savior be upon you and go with you now henceforth and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget to hit my Facebook page up. Amen. Uh, Bishop Darrell Towns, hit my Facebook page up. Let me know you viewed the broadcast. Amen. And we thank God for you today. Amen. We praise God. God bless you is our prayer. Amen. Goodbye for now. All right, I'm right, I'm right.